most of the time, the exam paper are not that up to date to the real world. So what you're learning is content more than 10 years ago. You are not expected to learn the most up to date latest development in the world. So, so it's a decentralization process. It's away from the center in geography term. So usually the urban would be the city center, the heart of the business district, right? So, but if you go outward, chances are the population density and building density will decrease. So decentralization is meaning people move away from the city center to the outer bound or to the edge of the city. Yeah. So not just people, but also economic activities. Because when we have people, we will have economic activities. So if you think of if I move to the urban, I still need other services, right? I need restaurant, I need a supermarket, I need what else, like a hair salon, all these type of business services. So when there are people, there will be businessmen making business to cater and support these people. Because when there's people, there's money, right? So as simple as that. So naturally, the outward movement of people would develop economic activities. And or sometimes people will follow that together. Yeah. So this time it's the city center to suburban. And the key point for suburbanization is the people who live in the suburb, they still work in the city center, still work in the main urban areas. So example of Hong Kong would be those who live in let's say Shaco, Sai Kong or uh, Pok Fulan, they still work probably in Central, Chim Sha Chui, in Causeway Bay, this kind of business district because they can afford to commute. And I think now with pandemic, more people are working from home. So this is, I mean, an exception. It's not the norm. It's not the norm for it. So working from home is not counted. Right? But right now, the trend is more people are working from home. And at least in smaller suburban district, at least in the US. So, but I mean, this is a UK exam, so you can ignore that. And most of the time, the exam paper are not that up to date to the real world. So what you're learning is content more than 10 years ago. So the thing more than 10 years ago, you are not expected to learn the most up to date latest development in the world. So anyway, you still have to do it. So they expect you to learn that in university. But the problem is university professor are not bothered to update their PowerPoint slide because most of them teach as an obligation for their tenure. So they sign a contract with university to do research, but part of their research contract obliged that to teach. People still work in main urban areas and they commute back and forth every day because of the limited job opportunities in the suburban district. So here, there's a caveat. So not necessarily limited job opportunities in terms of the sheer size and number, but in terms of fitting opportunities for those people. So imagine if you can afford to live in Sai Kong or live in like Bofulam or like Cyberport, those high-end residential district, are you going to work in the supermarket? Probably no. Or maybe you are the manager of the supermarket. <laughs> That's a different point, but you're not going to work as the waiter or waitress in those restaurants. So those job opportunities, even they are there, are not suitable for people living there. So the security guard, those kind of things. So not for those residents. Yeah. So they still commute back and forth to mostly the business district. Why? So one, the first one is continuous population growth, simply because there's not enough space and room for people in the urban environment or the city center. So it becomes too crowded, overcrowded, and people who can afford is going to move away. So they think that, oh, it's too crowded, air pollution, noise pollution, a lot of traffic congestion, so inconvenient. So they decide to move away. Let's move further away with better, more pleasant living environment. So 
and they can afford it, then they move away. Urban decay. So have you heard about this word? It means that when the people, the middle income and high income group, they move away from the urban to the suburb, leaving behind a few groups of people. Can you make a guess? Who would be left behind in the urban? Yeah, low income. What else? No income, yes. Homeless. Who would be unwilling to move around? Yeah, the old people. They, if they are able to afford, maybe they will. But for those, uh, most of them probably are unwilling to move around. Like for the very old people who are relatively wealthy, relatively wealthy old people, they would be the same. They will still move. But for average middle income or low income group, they tend to not move because like all is very serious, right? So there's an inertia in moving because it takes time, it takes mental effort to pack all the stuff and to move, right? So it's not as easy as if you consider like your stuff should increase along with your age, right? So you, you start collecting a lot more stuff. Like imagine if you keep adding stuff in your room, eventually you run out of space. But so naturally, the older people have more stuff and packing all those and unpacking all those is quite like effort demanding. So yeah, and also you factor in the finance, other stuff. Living behind the low income group, poor people and the old people. So are they willing to spend money? Yeah, not really, right? So naturally, they would become unwilling to renovate the home. Urban decay means the urban center is becoming like lack of maintenance because they're unwilling to spend money to renovate or maintain the building. So living behind a very rundown, poor building. So you find those in the inner city. These require the flat owner or the apartment owner to contribute to renovate the building because it's, it is public, right? The outer wall of the building is like, is everyone's. So they each need to contribute. But if most of them are old people and poor people, they're unwilling to spend money for other people. They will just live it for themselves because I mean, for poor people, they don't even have enough. Why should I renovate the outer wall of the building for who, right? So it means eventually the image of the inner city is going to be very bad. And if you think of a lot of old people pushing like the trolley with those waste paper, recycled paper, it's not a good image. So, and then it means that the neighborhood is going to be even worse. So eventually it becomes less attractive and more people want to leave. So it's a negative cycle like a vicious cycle, so, yeah, so not very good. And it requires something we call the urban renewal, like the government to intervene, to do like redevelopment. They knock down the old building, build a new one. People's income, yeah, they will increase and they demand a better living. So if you consider overall economy improving, people are making more money, then they would naturally demand a better lifestyle. Yeah, imagine if you, let's say right now your family, they are doubling the income. Like, wow, very good, right? Then you change your home. Let's say live a bigger home and then maybe um, like live somewhere else, right? I don't know where you want to live, but if you are able to afford, you will consider that. But if you can't, naturally you won't even think of that. Yeah. Improvement in transport. So it's about building road. So when the roads are connecting the urban city center and the suburb, it means the people can commute. So when there's no road, like it's impossible, right? Or if the road network is, the capacity is too low, there's always congestion. So if you think of Twin Moon, uh, probably you don't know where, right? So there's a Castle Peak Road uh, linking, you know, you heard it, heard of it? Yeah. So. The Castle Peak will always congest, like it's always congested because there's only, I think, two or three driving lanes and there's a lot of vehicles going in and out of Twin Moon because Twin Moon is a new town and it also links other new town on the western part of the new territory. So it's one of the major 
uh, main road connecting the western part of the new territory to Kowloon. So a lot of vehicles anyway, so most of the time. So it's very inconvenient. Imagine every time you commute, you have to stuck in traffic for more than half an hour to even one hour. And those times stuck in traffic is that time. It's a waste. Like you're not productive. I mean, you can sleep, but it's not a good quality of sleep, right? And and you you don't want to work. What if you don't get to sit down, right? And you can't take up your lap, laptop and work. So it's not a good place to be productive, and it's a waste of time to be honest. So that would affect people's consideration whether to move further out. But if there is enough road, like enough capacity, the speed between commuting is okay, then maybe they will consider that. Also, the ownership of private car, comfort and convenience. So public transport is cheap, but it's inconvenient. You have to wait for it. And sometimes it's very long. You, you don't know when the bus is going to come. And then once it comes, there's two bus all together. Have you experienced that before? Sometimes probably not a lot, right? And so it means it's, it's very bad. Like right? So you would probably like to drive or at least uh, have a private car if you can afford. Because it's one thing that you drive. It's another thing that you can drive, right? So if you have a private car, you have another option. But if you don't, you don't have that option. So in life, there's like the more option, usually you have a better life because you can always turn off the option. Like it's one thing that you have the ability to choose. It's the other thing that you can't choose, right? You, you can't or not. So, I mean, it's the same with like university degree. The higher the score you have, the more option you have. And then you can, it's a good problem to have by then, yeah. Anyway, so mostly linked back to the middle to high income group. For country or places like Hong Kong, private car ownership is uh, quite common like in most middle household, except where they live, there's no car park. Like another like factor limiting the number of private car would be the car parks, where the people can find a place to park right? and how costly is it. So because like you, you probably live in an apartment, right? Yeah. So there's a car park built in. Yeah. So if you, if you have a car at home, right? Probably. Yeah, if, if not more than one. So then but imagine if you can't find a parking place in your apartment. So you have to park it elsewhere. It's so inconvenient. Yeah. So every time you have to walk to take the car and then after parking the car, you have to walk back home. So it's very inconvenient. And imagine if you can't find nearby parking lot, like you have to go a long distance. Let's say you even have to take public transport to get to it. Yes, so, but it is the situation for quite a lot of car owners because like in Hong Kong, a lot of apartments don't have car park or the number of car parks is not enough. Like the supply is not enough compared to the size of the number of flats and household. So beat the price up and then for those who can't afford it, they will have to consider alternative, right? So either not to have a car or park it elsewhere. Yeah, if you have a car, there's a lot of expense like, accompany that. And if you have an electric car, then you have to consider oh, whether I can. the car park has the plug to charge. So urban planning decision. So I think we talked about it last time. So new town development is the government initiative. So most of the time, suburbanization is also driven by the government to relocate people away from the city center. So we talk about decentralization. To solve the overcrowd, air pollution, noise pollution, congestion in the city center, one of the easiest way is to build a new town in the outskirts of the city. So, and to do that with public housing. So when the government build public housing, it's affordable or even free. So people will go there. Because imagine for lower income group or middle income group or young adults simply, that they can't afford to buy their own. Now, all of a sudden, the government say, at this very affordable price, you can have your own home, or even for free, for low-income group. 
then they are going to be say yeah let's go right so they go to the new town and as we talk about economic activities when there's people there will be business activities so it's a very natural way to shift people away from the city center to the new town yeah so so not all of them are middle income group or high income group there's also a government intervention but it also creates the problem of commuting because those low income group and middle income group who go to the public housing in the new town is still going to find work in the main urban district so it's the same so if the road network is not good enough you're just making the congestion problem worse off because more people are now commuting back and forth instead of in the city center right yeah so imagine if you work in central you live in mid level maybe you just take the bus or you just walk down there but now imagine if you live in i don't know let's say saikong then you have to drive or take public transport back and forth every day between saikong and central industrial estate so quite common in hong kong and also i think in uk so there will be industrial town specifically for a certain industry or certain factory so in the case of uk probably there will be some small towns with just big factory right i mean and the town is mostly the people working there so i think uh, there's a case in ferrari like in italy there's a town called marilano something like that probably pronounced the italian name wrong but uh the whole town with the people there is to support the ferrari factory and most people there work for ferrari and their family yeah so it's just a small town for that factory because it employs quite like a few hundreds of people so yeah it makes sense to just have a town for that covid this one is about us so unless you do us case study you can ignore that but you can see mostly people migrate out of the big city so the rent is one indication of people like the demand so if the rent increase chances are there are more demand for that because higher demand drive higher price so you can see mostly a way like small district like not the traditional big one yeah and even new york city you can see more further away not the downtown new york there's even hawaii yeah you can see hawaii has increased like more people can now work from home right so imagine if you're a u.s worker then you say oh let's go to hawaii and live there when you can work from home there's also adjustment in wage because most of the time your salary is has factored in your daily expense so imagine if you work in central then your salary will be adjusted for the cost of dining every day in central because it's quite expensive so if you get the same job let's say in a bank if you work in central your income will be higher than someone let's say working i don't know like uh, let's say chang sha wan or, or chin wan it's like smaller in inner city because they know that the bank know that the cost of dining out every day is not as expensive so the salary will be adjusted naturally even though it's quite bad it's kind of discrimination but, uh, but imagine if you take the same salary but now you work from home so you get the salary working in central but now you live in i don't know you live in finland in new territory very cheap as long as you have wi-fi then you're making a lot more money out of it so a lot more u.s company are now adjusting the salary income uh, like and employer benefit because of that like for those who can work from home they will get a salary reduction because they say okay now you are living away so your cost of living should be lower yeah yeah i mean it makes sense yeah from the company perspective not from the employee perspective yeah who, who would want the salary deduction